This is Lenovo's $750 gaming laptop, currently on sale for $550. If it's still on sale, head down in the description below, click the links, let me know, because this is an insane deal. However, the real question that begs here is, is this the right laptop for you? Oftentimes there's this conversation about, I need to find the cheapest gaming laptop, or I need to find the cheapest laptop for school or whatever it might be. But the real question that never gets asked is, what performance do you need for the tasks that you plan to accomplish with your device? Because the cheapest might not always be the best, but it might be. This video is brought to you by Asus ProArt Laptops, the laptops built from the ground up for creators. More information to come later in the video. First and foremost, let's dive into the usability and the features of this laptop, and then we'll get into the performance to make sure that you make a qualified purchasing decision of one of the most budget-friendly laptops that I have ever had the chance to review. Now diving right in, let's take a look at the build quality of this laptop. Obviously it's going to be an all plastic build. They use nice plastic material on the top cover as well as the bottom cover. It doesn't have any of that cheap, like really chintzy thin plastic. It has a really good thick, firm sound to the tap. And when you're pushing on the laptop, it does not bend down. You can see from the front camera here, we're not getting a lot of flex on the bottom cover. And as we look towards the top cover, top of the chassis, not a lot of flex either. So it's assembled well and choosing good materials. Now, even looking at the assembly of the bottom cover into the side panel, you can see it's all put together really well. No catchy edges, nothing sticking out. The Lenovo has done a really good job putting this laptop together. And you have three large sections for ventilation here on the bottom cover of the laptop. And you also have ventilation along the back panel of the laptop. Now, while we're taking a look at the exterior of the laptop, let's check out the ports. On the right side panel, we have USB type A, headphone jack, manual cutoff switch with a webcam and a USB type C. On the other side, oh, nothing. And on the back panel, we have USB type A's. We have an HDMI network port as well as your power adapter port. Now taking a look at the weight and thickness, this is a mid-range weight and thickness. It's not super thick, not super thin, neither is it really heavy or is it really light. It's just kind of smack dab in the middle. Now going ahead and taking a look at the open and close, this opens and closes easily with one hand because of the weight that it does have. And the hinge is very nice, it flows very easily. Now taking a look at the screen bounce, that is an area that I would say if you're somebody who travels a lot, likes to use your laptop on the go, whether it be a taxi, on a boat, in a plane, or on a train, uh, you're gonna have a bit of screen bounce. Now going ahead and looking at the screen flex, good amount of screen flex as well. But remember, if you get this laptop on sale, it's $550. So it is good build materials, but nothing is really sturdy Godzilla gorillas. Godzilla gorilla, moving on. Now taking a look at the display as we open up the laptop, you can see it folds out completely flat, which is really nice. A lot of laptops in the budget-friendly category usually just kind of stop here and that's all you get. But taking a look at the display, you see we have 321 nits of screen brightness, quite bright actually. I was reviewing an Alienware recently, it only had 297 nits and it was three times the price of this laptop. So nice screen brightness. We have a 99% sRGB, shocking. For a $500, $50 laptop, you couldn't have gotten 70% sRGB just a year or two ago at this price point. But we have 99% sRGB, 78% Adobe RGB, and 77% DCI-P3. So definitely upping the game for budget-friendly laptops. Like I said, on sale, $550, insane. And on top of all of that, you have a Delta E that's less than two. Anything less than two means that it is very color accurate with the color gamut range that it, the screen can reproduce. 1.78 for the color gamut range. Absolutely phenomenal for this price point. Ridiculous. I'm like shocked even just, just reporting this. Now, next up is gonna be the 60 watt hour battery, which is gonna provide us with about six hours of battery life streaming video playback. Honestly, that's good. I mean, it was just a few years ago that most laptops were getting about you know four to five to six hours at the $2,000 plus price point. And to see this laptop again at the price point it is and still getting six hours of battery life is quite amazing. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the interior of the laptop. Classic Lenovo Legion keyboard. However, we're looking at the Lenovo lock. Classic keyboard layout, numpad on the right side, full size shift key, full size arrow keys. Love the layout. One thing I'm not fond of about the layout, it's just my preference is it's a bit shifted over to the left. 
the trackpad, which centers up on the keyboard instead of on the keyboard deck. And so your trackpad is going to be a bit over here. Nice for left-handed users, not so advantageous for right-handed users because you're kind of reaching over your uh, hand, but that's just their design choice and they've done it for the past probably four or five years, maybe even more. Now looking back to the keyboard, you can see nice snapback, quiet keyboard, not gonna annoy your neighbors. This is great. What they've done is they've taken all the engineering from the Legion series, which are more expensive laptops, usually anywhere from about 800 to $1,000 more on average easily and you've gone ahead and placed that keyboard into the lock. So you've gotten all the engineering prowess of the Legion series, but in this nice budget for the laptop. The keys feel great, quiet, snappy. Man, I couldn't ask for anything more. This video is brought to you by the ASUS ProArt P16, the flagship creator laptop from ASUS that provides on-the-go workstation performance within a beautiful and durable military-tested all-aluminum chassis outfitted with a pen-compatible 4K OLED Corning glass display that is durable and color accurate. It weighs four pounds and is just over a half an inch thick, capable of all-day battery life for productivity tasks, and fitted with the ASUS dial to streamline your workflow, providing access to your most commonly used tools. Equipped with the AMD Ryzen AI9 CPU, up to 64 gigs of RAM, and an RTX 4060 or 4070, this device is a powerhouse for architecture and 3D modeling work. And trust me, this is just the tip of the iceberg when looking at what the ASUS ProArt P16 has to offer. Check out my full review content within the playlist linked in the YouTube cards above or in the description below. Thank you so much to ASUS ProArt for sponsoring this part of the video. Going ahead and shifting our focus to the trackpad, same thing. You get all of the prowess of the Legion series, but in a nice budget-friendly package of the lock. Here's a quick sample of me using both the keyboard and trackpad so you can hear for yourself what they sound like. And of course, there is a webcam on the top bezel. Here's a sample of me using it so you can hear and see what it looks and sounds like. This is the webcam on the Lenovo Lock with the Intel Art Graphics from 2024 and a little sample of the audio for you as well. Now, the one thing I want to point out is the audio. The speakers are one area that they definitely went a little bit budget friendly on. Uh, they're good. They're, they're in no stretch of the imagination. Great. Here's an audio sample so you can hear for yourself. Now, one thing that I love about this laptop is, of course, because it is a nice kind of chunky gaming laptop, you have all kinds of upgrade opportunities. For the $550 or $750 price point, this laptop comes with 12 gigs of RAM, but you can easily pull that RAM stick out and put in two 16 gig sticks and have 32 gigs of RAM super easily. So let's say you buy this laptop, you save a bit more money, you go ahead and you pick out some RAM modules and you upgrade the laptop. You've already increased the performance dramatically by going from 12 gigs to 32 gigs because there's two slots available inside of this system. Not only that, but you also have two M.2 slots available. One's gonna be occupied with the boot drive and one's gonna be available for you to go ahead and put a two or four terabyte drive in there when your budget allows you so you're outfitting your computer to be even better performance than when you purchased it. And so that's the really great thing about this laptop is you can start super budget friendly and then work it into a more powerful performance laden laptop over time as your budget allows. So really awesome setup here. I love how it starts budget friendly, but then allows you the option to get it beefier as you go along. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the performance of this laptop. Looking at 3D modeling, you can see that we have decent 3D modeling scores from this laptop. This would not be the laptop that I would choose as my 3D modeling laptop. It just doesn't have the kick with the Intel Arc graphics that I had really hoped for. Uh, the Intel Arc A530M graphics, it's a four gig of VRAM card, just doesn't have the kick that it really needs to be a great 3D modeling laptop. So keep that in mind. It would not be my recommendation uh, to go ahead and do 3D modeling in any of the programs I've shown here. Now let's go ahead and take a look at Photoshop, a 5,840 score. This has 12 gigs of RAM. So if you were to go ahead and upgrade this to say even 16 or 32 gigs of RAM, I could see this laptop easily being in the high 6,000s or even low 7,000s, which would give you plenty of performance inside of Photoshop and the Adobe Creative Suite as a whole. So it has the potential 
It has the bones, it has the, you know, the good foundation, just needs a little bit of extra umph with some RAM upgrade. And I think this would be off to the races. Now, next we're gonna take a look at the export time, a five minute and 27 second 4K export time, good export. Um, I really like to see laptops that are like $1,500 to $2,000 range in the two to two minute and 30 second range. So think about this laptop being four times less or three times less that price you're only really increasing the uh, the amount of export time actually by twice. So price to performance ratio, this actually is showing really good, really good performance. Uh, now the playback for 4K could definitely be improved with a RAM upgrade. The Premiere Pro playback really likes RAM and this has 12 gigs, which is good. But if it had 16 or 32, your playback would be a bit smoother. However, keep in mind, the playback is out of 16,177 in the project. So it's only about 10% of the project is having drop frames. You will most likely not notice that, especially as you're editing, you're not just like letting the playback just play the whole time. You're scrubbing and changing things and moving things around. So I think you'll be in good hands. Punch for punch, I would say this is a great laptop for somebody who's an entry level creator, somebody who's a student who wants to do some creative work, or somebody who's a student who wants to do some gaming, this is beyond amazing. The price that you get, uh, the performance that we're seeing and thinking about this laptop, providing you with a great upgrade path. So as your budget grows, you could buy the laptop and then save up some money to then upgrade it later. Uh, and there's an open M.2 slot. There's available RAM stick slots. I mean, you just got everything you need for a laptop that will serve you for a number of years as, as you need more performance, it will grow with you. Really, really cool. Remember that links are in the description below if you're ready to make a purchase or click or tap the screen here for more videos to help you with your buying decision. I'll see you in the next one.